Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your July 1st to the 15th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aquarius, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels. Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, and show me clearly. Fantastic. Okay. So at the bottom is our inner, is our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. The, so let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Fool and the Knight of Cups. So if we're born on the cusp with Pisces, or if we have a lot of water sign energy within our chart, or water sign energy within our chart, this part of our personality is going to be coming out very, very strong. And it's almost as if emotionally we want to go one way, but we're being called forward to go on another adventure, to go a different way. And so here, Aquarius, at our root, there can be a bit of conflict. So do be mindful of that. Then we have Judgment and the hanged man the inner self both major arcana cards both super intense judgment is hearing the call of our angels hearing the call of our spirit guides being resurrected out of darkness doubt despair hurt pain and the hangman is not seeing things the same way as everybody else and we're going to initially think like oh my gosh i'm wrong you know look at everybody they're seeing it this way and i'm over here doing my thing does that mean that i'm more wrong no it doesn't i mean as long as we're coming from a place of love kindness respect and, and compassion, then we're okay. And this is a time to embrace our ideas and our desires and our wants and our dreams. And it leads us to our heart, which is the two of wands, seeing new ways forward. I like how she's holding a cell phone in her hands instead of the world. And of course you'll see that more in, or you'll see that in just a moment, but let's see right here. So it's, it's holding the world in our hands and the way that we communicate with the world now, it's not looking simply at a, a globe, but it's holding a cell phone and it's being able to connect to everyone and everything and seeing the way that we want to move forward and how we can move forward. We're having a gift from God, source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe of prosperity, bounty, abundance. It leads us then 
to the Eight of Swords in the public arena, we're going to have a hard time moving forward. There's going to be something that's holding us back, something it can be mentally. And for a lot of us, it is going to be these doubts, these fears like, oh, everybody else can do this, but that's not for me. I'm not that brave. I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. We're going to have a million and a half different reasons why we can't. And this is a time where we need to start breaking that cage that we're in and being able to free ourselves. Then we have the page of cups again, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Inspiration is going to come from one of the most unlikely places, and it's going to be very powerful for us. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just going to take a sip of water. Now let's see what our chakra energy is. Aquarius, Ooh. July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius, angels and spirit guides. There we go. Personal power comes right out. This sense of strength, this sense of power and determination and focus. This is the solar plexus chakra. Our gut is going to be a big part of us during this time. We're going to have to trust our gut feel, our gut reactions, what we want, what we're desiring, instead of, you know, poo-pooing ourselves and saying, oh, I'm just making a big thing out of nothing or, oh, you know, I'm just being silly with what I really desire. It's it's being able to say, no, there's, there's brilliance here. There's power here. There's intensity here. And I'm harnessing that for myself. I'm moving myself forward in a very real, honest, and beautiful way. Now let's look at the energy we are to be mindful of during this time. What is the energy that Aquarius needs to be mindful of? July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. The King of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If we're born on the cusp of Capricorn, or we have a lot of Earth Sign Energy in our chart, or Earth Sign Energy in our chart, this is going to be a time where we have to be very mindful of the practical side of us coming forward. Because again, we're resurrecting. We're coming out of darkness. We're seeing things differently. And the practical side of us is going to say, well, this isn't proven. This isn't tested. You know, what makes me think that I have the ability to do what others can't. What makes me think that I can achieve where others fail or walk a road that doesn't come with a 401k and doesn't have everything safely kind of lined up. The King of Pentacles is going to be that alluring aspect of more stability and more stability. And there's a sense here that yes, that's great. And stability is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it at all. But what we also have to do is be able to live the lives that we ourselves want to live in the power and the insight and the ideas that we want from life and the desire that we, we have for our own existence. And we're going to be very drawn to people who we see as being very logical. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're going to be using the logic that is right for them, that works for them at that time. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the logic that is right for everybody else. So if we're doubting ourselves because we're listening to somebody or we're talking to somebody and we really admire them, but they don't believe in what we believe in or want to move forward in the way that we want to move forward or think that our dreams have merit, we have to step back and say, who am I going to let have power over my life at this moment? Because so often, and I see it time and time again, we are, we as human beings, we're just inspired by somebody and we think, oh my gosh, that person has all the answers. Instead of realizing that they're a person resurrecting out of their own darkness, their own doubts, their own hurts, they see the world differently because everybody's eyes are different. Everybody has this different power to them. And that's where we have the fool's adventure coming in. Every single fool is a hero. Now, whether we get to, to slay the dragons and, and defeat Medusa, well, that's that's entirely up to us. But the fact of the matter is to move forward, to, to live, to love, to, to trust, to laugh, to, to be, that's an extraordinary thing. And it's something that we take for granted. We think, oh, of course, everybody does this, but they don't, they don't. Actually, we have the eight of swords right here and people live their whole lives in the eight of swords, trapped in the doubts and the fears of their own, their own making people around them, you know, not being able to live the lives that they want and not being able to break free of hurtful, harmful patterns. And with the, and with the fool, it's saying it's time. It's time to embrace. It's time to express. It's time to look at things differently. It's time to go after what it is that we want. It's time. Our spirit guide, the little dog, 
is celebrating with us, but also warning us. You know, it's not going to be an easy road. And nobody ever promised that it was. One of the things that religions have in common, and even mythologies, forgotten religions or non-worshipped religions, is that is that they all have suffering involved with them. Or maybe not worship, but less worship now, nowadays. They all have suffering involved with them. Life is hard, and life will always be hard. But the worst thing is to have a dream and a hope and a gift and a talent. And never bring it forward. Never bring ourselves forward into that light. And it moves us to the Knight of Cups. We're going to be heading in a different direction. Our dream is going to be bringing us one way. And our heart is going to be bringing us another way. Or a sense of emotionally, maybe I should do this. You know, emotionally, it'll be safer. It'll be more trustworthy. I can, I can get this done faster. We can also have people kind of emotionally... It's manipulating, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that they're manipulating. They just think that they know best. And there's going to be the sense of, well, why can't you do it like this? And why can't you move this way? And that's going to be one of the things that we battle at our root is emotionally connecting to people who see things differently than we do and not feeling like we're letting them down, not feeling like we're making the wrong choice. So that's going to be something that's very important. And then to, to know that our emotions, as we progress forward, have our back you know, are watching so that we can jump, so that we can go and fly and be. There's a sense of emotional strength and security guiding us to what we need, to what we desire. And as we do so, we're coming out of the box. We're awakening, we're moving forward, we're going after something that we hadn't seen before. So the world was black, or the world was white. You know, it's an oversaturation of anything is going to make us not be able to see. And so here, we weren't able to see clearly. Everything was a certain way, or it could be that we saw the life that we had, we saw the box that we were in, and we thought, okay, I see it. I don't understand how I got to this point, how my dreams and my hopes and my desires, and now I'm, I'm stuck. But if we start answering the call of spirit within us, we start saying there, there's purpose here, there's inspiration, there's power, there's, you know, dedication forward. I'm going after this. I'm going after me. I'm going after what I need and what I desire and what I see within myself and what I want. And then we rise. We rise into warmth, into light, into, into feeling. So you know when you lay out in the sun and your whole body gets like toasty warm? That's what I'm feeling here for us. For you, Aquarius, there is this sense of this warmth radiating out because I'm stepping into the sun. I'm stepping into this healing. I'm stepping into this power. And it brings me to a place where I acknowledge I'm seeing things differently than other people. My idea of success might not be their idea of success. My idea of happiness might not be their idea of happiness. I'm taking in different information. Different things are inspiring me. Different things are moving me forward. I'm, I'm passionate. I'm insightful. And I'm embracing this in a very real way. And even though it doesn't fit into the conformity, it fits into something that is extraordinarily powerful for me. And that opens up doors. And that leads me forward. And it leads me to my emotional self saying, where do I fit within this world? How do I get to where it is that I want to be? We all hold the world in our hands every single day. And it's extraordinary. It's just extraordinary. But it can also be very detrimental to be able to connect with so many different opinions and so many different ideas at once. It can be this huge blessing, but also we have seen that it can be a, a huge curse. There is a sense here of looking forward. And I would say put the phone in your pocket or leave it on the side and just look into the world. And say, who am I when I don't have to be connected? Who am I when I don't have to hear other people's opinions or point of views, but when I just get to be me? When I just get to, you know, do what I desire, do what I want, do what I need, and not worry if my phone isn't tracking my steps or, you know, I'm not getting my workout tracked. It's where do I want to be within my life? How do I move me forward? 
the two of, of wands opens up a world. But it also shows us at times how confined we can be. How it's hard to move forward. It's hard to accept things. It's hard to see things differently. It brings us to the Ace of Pentacles. And the Ace of Pentacles is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of prosperity, wealth, success, bounty. Mm -hmm. It leads us to a new era in our existence. It leads us to new ideas, to new desires, to a way of moving forward, to this greater sense of self and what I want. What is here is a seed to be planted, nourished and grown. What is here is something more than expected. And it is something that can be ignored if we want to. It can also very much align us with the energy we have to be mindful of, the energy of bringing everything down to the interconnectedness of success. The show me the money and that's all that matters. And again, I'm not saying that money doesn't matter. Money matters a lot. The only person who downplays it is the person who's always had it. When it comes to prosperity, sometimes we get so focused on the way things should be, the way things are on Instagrams and movies and, you know, reality TV, that we forget that there's a life outside of that, that it isn't a competition. This isn't this sort of weird competition to always be perfect and that some of the greatest seeds planted within us, some of the greatest bounty does not come from perfection. It comes from this discovery. It comes from ingenuity. It comes from tenacity. And planting those seeds and watching them grow, well, that's going to be a gift. But in the public arena, Aquarius, there's this sense of, but I can't do that. There's a sense of doubt and, and fear and negativity coming in. And it's almost like people have put, and what I'm seeing here is people have put this, this cage around us. And it could be one sword for every different person who has told us we can't, who said we were failures, who, you know, just couldn't see the, the possibility within us. And that's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Because some people, like, you know, Frank Sinatra said, some people get their kicks stomping on a dream. They just do. They think it's great. Especially if you show a vulnerability to them and they can find a way to exploit that. A way to say, well, maybe this is all your fault. Maybe this is all your drama. You know, you deserve this. That's some sort of messed up mind game. And the Eight of Swords is us being stuck there forever and ever. It's Mrs. Hemsty. Oh, I always forget her name. It starts with an H. From Great Expectations. You guys always remind me because you're awesome. Who wore her rotted wedding dress for a dream that might have been. For a marriage that might have made her happy or might have made her miserable. The Eight of Swords is being stuck in that nightmare and not being able to free ourselves. It's time to take off the dress. It's time to say, I get to move forward and I get to get out of this cage of my own mind, of fear, of doubt, of taking everybody's opinion so seriously that I lose the sight and the sound of my own voice. And it brings us to the Page of Cups. It's finding inspiration in the most unlikely of place. There's, in Irish mythology, it's the story of Finn McCool. And in one part, he touches the salmon of wisdom, right? And he touches it on his thumb, then he puts his thumb in his mouth. And all of a sudden he has like all the wisdom in all the world. And that's what I see when I look at this fish. I just see the story of Finn McCool. The fact that we can have this wisdom, we can have this greatness. And it comes from doing something as odd as touching a fish and sucking our thumb, which is not something I recommend at all. But there's this sense here of inspiration and passion and power and insight coming to us from unseen ways, beautifully, powerfully, and, and intensely. It opens up the door. It guides us forward. We're being a student of our hearts. Why? Because we're trapped in and we're coming out of doubt and fear. And so we need to look at things with wonderment. That is something that spirit has been guiding me towards during this time. It's a sense of wonderment of the world around us, of, of joys and successes, but also the sorrows and the disappointments. A sense of, wow. And I see it with my nephew. You know, you open up a box in front of him, you go outside and you, you show him his little, you know, kitty swimming pool. He's like, wow, even though we do that every single day. And it's having that wonderment. It's having that beauty. 
It's being in awe of things again. We lose that. I was talking to my sister-in-law and she said that her daughter was three years old and a bit jaded, you know, nothing really impresses her. And I thought, oh my gosh, we get that way, don't we? And relatively young and we stay like that. It's like, oh, it's, it's not impressive. I've seen this before. But to keep that wonderment, to keep that wow, that genuine wow, that's an extraordinary thing. And here it's opening us up to the extraordinary and bringing that into the world of our ordinary, just to have that wonderment, just to have that kind of erotic pleasure in existence. And it's not simply, you know, sexual eroticism. It is the sense of the world being a place to be discovered and our lives and our loves being something to be discovered. So at our root, let's go deeper. Show me deeply the root of Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Show me deeply the root of Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. We have the devil. That makes sense. This is Capricorn energy, and we do have that being the energy that we have to be mindful of, right? Because it's part of Earth sign energy. But the devil binds us. The devil is a malevolent figure, even if you don't believe in the devil, right? But if you look at it through literature or historically, it is a malevolent figure that binds us to the worst part of us. And here it's breaking that bound, that bind, that binding. Yeah, there we go. It's saying, no, I'm done. I'm done being chained. And what's so interesting about the devil is that the chains are loose. We can take them off. We can say, I'm done with this. And I'm not going to move forward in this. I'm not bound by anybody else's expectation of me, desire for me. I'm not held prey to what the world wants me to believe and think and do. I get to be me. And I get to do so with, with focus. And, and knowing that it's hard. That there is a darkness that tries to pull us back. There is a despair or an ennui or a, a sense of, of I can't. That plagues some more than it plagues others. But I'm not going to be chained anymore. To addictions and doubts and fears. To hurts and pains and disappointments. They don't get to be what rules me and decides my dreams. Then we have our inner self. So let's go deeply into that. Show me deeply the inner self of Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Show me deeply the inner self of Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. It's death. <laughs> Very cheery cards, I know. And I do apologize for that. But it's what the spirit is saying. And I laugh because we see death and we think, oh my gosh, it's over. We have the devil, we have death. It's like, I'm not going to be able to move forward. But the fact of the matter is, here we have two major arcana cards and a court card. Here we have three major arcana cards. This is an intense time for us. And what we're being faced with is, do I move forward towards something that brings bliss, joy, happiness, you know, a smile to my life? Or do I move forward with what everybody else wants me to be in a, a trap that I can't seem to break? And the death card is a dying way of the old self, a rebirth of the new. We might mourn the innocence that was lost. We might mourn the fact that the dream didn't come true in the timeline that we wanted it to. We might mourn that the dream didn't come true. You know, something might have been taken off the table and it's hurtful and it's powerful and it's, it can be devastating. But there's also a sense here of I'm not being held back. I'm transformed into power, into a person I might never have thought I could be, but into somebody who is more and who is fiercer than others will ever anticipate. And it brings us then to go more deeply into our emotional self. Show me deeply the emotional self of Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Show me deeply the emotional self of Aquarius. July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. These two. 
We have the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. It's hard work and discipline. The Knight of Pentacles is us slowly and steadily moving towards our goals. Emotionally, we... Oh, that's so beautiful. I just saw it. So we're taking this gift, right? Right here in our hands. It's guiding our way. Slowly and steadily, we're moving towards a divine sending. And it brings us also to this creation of that divine sending, getting it right, practicing those 10,000 hours put in to become an expert at something and embracing the brilliance, embracing the beauty, embracing the time and the effort and, and the technique and knowing that, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and it didn't fall in a day. It takes time to create and it takes time to destroy. And it's honoring that even if others do not. It brings us then to go more deeply into our public self. Show me deeply the public self of Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Show me deeply the public self of Aquarius, July 1st to the 15th, 2021 Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. We have the Queen of Cups. It's that water sign energy coming through and instead of being a student now, we are a queen. And I love it how we have a sea serpent out in the background and she's calm and serene. So it's saying that as we go deeper, we're able to conquer nightmares, doubts, fears, that which has held us back. And we do so by embracing peace with the lotus flower and the fish down below. The fish has grown from the inspiration in the cup to, to a thriving being at our feet. And we are growing more than we expected. And we're embracing a power we hadn't seen before. It comes from peace. It comes from peace. And that's going to be something that's imperative that we embrace. It leads us now to our subconscious message. Our subconscious chakra message is holistic health, the root chakra. This is one of my favorite cards. This is holistically embracing a path to healing. This is saying also, I need to be my holistic self. I need to be open and honest and true and say, this is me. With power and prosperity and, and dignity of being. This can be, you know, using homeopathy. This can be doing acupuncture or TCM. This can be, this can be starting to care for ourselves. Also, Spirit is saying like, I take sublingual vitamins, so they melt in my mouth, which is fantastic if you have a bad digestive system. If you do, this is something that could really help you. I, I know I found it. I find it absolutely amazing. And it's doing these things. It's getting back into the rhythm of our bodies, getting back into the power of ourselves that is going to be, to be life-changing. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Queen of Wands. The passion boiling the water too much, having us evaporate. Don't be so driven that we forget to be to be careful of ourselves, to take care of ourselves. The Queen of Wands is tenacious and, and fiery and and willing to get our hands dirty in order to get to where it is that she needs to be. And again, we're going to be very inspired for these people who are very connected to the earthly world. But this is a time, Aquarius, where we cannot be, we should be mindful of getting so caught up in what others deem to be successful that we ignore the success of the soul. It leads us then to our subconscious root itself, which is the King of Cups. Water sign energy is huge for you, Aquarius. Absolutely huge. Now, either this means that the heart plays an integral part or that there is a powerful water sign energy around you that subconsciously you are going to be connected with. It can be in this public arena, you're meeting this person and they wind up being somebody who's just astoundingly influential within your life, within what you want, within to move you forward, but also at the root, subconsciously we're being told, lead by example, live the life that you want. Don't wait for anybody else to lead the way. The King of Cups says, this is who I am, this is what I want, this is what I need. And he goes after it. And that's what we need to do. It leads us to our subconscious inner self, 
which is the Two of Cups. Now this is unity and healing and success. This is the Minor Arcana Lovers card. Subconsciously, we're falling in love with life again. We're healing, we're embracing the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine aspects of ourselves. We're moving forward towards joy and prosperity and, and bliss. There is an element of bliss to this. Our subconscious emotional self is the Five of Pentacles. There's a part of us that has a poor person mentality. Subconsciously, the sense of, I don't deserve greatness, prosperity, success, to go in out of the cold and to, and to become warm and inspired and to meet new people and do new things. The Five of Pentacles is this sense of, but I can't. Subconsciously, our hearts have to battle against this because it'll try to rob away the success that is just such a profound part of us and that absolutely needs to be embraced and moved forward with. It moves us to our subconscious public self. And that's the Five of Wands. Now, the Five of Wands is chaos and battle. The Five of Wands is internal doubt and fear and chaos, external doubt and fear and chaos that tries to hold us back. And this is a time where we have to say enough is enough. I will not be held back. I will not be denied. And I will not fall into pettiness and let pettiness rule me. All right, Aquarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace what the future holds for us. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius.